the La Brea Tar Pits in the heart of Miracle Mile, a thriving mini metropolis near central Los Angeles, soon to have its own subway line below famed Wilshire Boulevard. The whole area sits on an ancient oil field, like so many other neighborhoods spread across Los Angeles. Prehistoric monsters roamed here a million years ago and got trapped in oil tar oozing from underground deposits. Tourists flock here every day to ooh and ah at the ick. High fences keep them away from the lake of tar and bubbling gases. But at a nearby street corner where pedestrians stroll and baby carriages roll, the gases are escaping from every crack and fissure. People are totally unaware that they're walking through these gases that are, um, can become explosive gases, can create fire. Environmentalist Patricia McPherson is keeping a video record of the spreading gases using a camcorder and an infrared FLIR camera. It turns invisible leaks into real-time thermal images. But what you're seeing via this FLIR camera is the actual methane because it shows the methane coming out. Across the street from the tar pits, she uses the FLIR camera to document hot spots we'd never see with a naked eye. The camcorder captures gas bubbling up through rainwater and a large tar burp. A city worker shreds a discarded cigarette to keep the flame from sparking an explosion. In a nearby building, she spots oil tar seeping into a parking structure and a sign pointing to an underground methane barrier to keep free-floating natural gas out of the building. And it usually flows from down below to the surface. Environmental scientist Tom Williams has been studying the La Brea area for years, along with McPherson. They're concerned about methane flowing upwards from ancient deposits and old oil wells. Once it gets about into the soil zone where buildings are built, then you have a problem of finding it. Testing shows these methane leaks include other chemicals like hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. Well, hydrogen sulfide can be deadly and can cause neurological damage at very, very low, low levels. Methane itself is odorless and invisible, except to the FLIR camera. McPherson and fellow activist Paul Ferrasi have helped pioneer its use at leak sites like this one. And I just couldn't believe that we were getting that kind of um, reading and at the volume that it was coming out because it's something out of a science fiction movie. To get a sense of the local methane threat, you have to understand that prehistoric beasts aren't the only ones who've been wallowing about in the oil tar bubbling up here. More than a century ago, petroleum companies began drilling for black gold, sinking more than 400 wells to get at it before they were done. As the city developed, the wells got shut down and covered up, but the technology used to plug them was often crude and leaky as a sieve. The old abandoned wells are still there, and they form pathways for the oil and the gas to come up. In 1985, just a mile and a half from here, roving methane found a spark and turned a city street into a ribbon of fire. It almost blew up again two years after the first. So there's gas everywhere and it's under pressure. It's coming out. The city eventually installed vent pipes in the La Brea area to siphon off underground methane. This one just across from the tar pits wasn't enough. A year ago, free-floating, unvented gas burst to the surface at the intersection. Paul and Patricia tracked it with their FLIR camera. It was coming out all through every orifice in the ground, just gushing up everywhere. They alerted the fire department and got what they say was a brush off. I kind of got this catch-22 answer of, no, they would only be responding to the explosion. Only after a bunch of Caltech students who were visiting here reported odd smells and suspicious oil seeps did the city get motivated to take action. Gonzalo Barriga was part of the emergency response team from the LA Department of Public Works. We had natural occurring methane at that area within explosive limits uh, based on our field equipment at the location. Barriga says the vent pipe had become clogged with tar causing the gases to seek other escape routes through manhole covers and underground cracks. Would a cigarette have 
been a problem in that environment. Anything that could cause any kind of ignition source, a cigarette, anything could cause an explosive limit to um, catch fire, explode, etc. Yeah. The city tried some quick fixes. They put in blowers down into all of the orifices and, and were constantly blowing it out. Bariga assures us the pipe is now cleaned out and allowing gases to vent properly. Follow-up tests are scheduled every six to eight weeks. Right now we're just trying to monitor to make sure that the stack continues to work properly. But scientist Tom Williams says when you do such monitoring, you're just getting snapshots of conditions that are changing every instant for better or worse. Every second of changeable every hour. And changeable. And changing. Because the earth changes, the flows change. Whether it rains or not changes those gas levels. Paul and Patricia are still finding methane leaks at the street corner, laced with a stinky odor of hydrogen sulfide. I would not want to be exposed to this. These are very deadly um, gases that, that one should not have to be exposed to. And this intersection isn't the only trouble spot. These computerized graphs show spiking methane leaks along several neighboring streets. They're based on data collected from sensors inside a moving vehicle. Paul and Patricia are pairing this technology with the FLIR camera to create a more dynamic picture of local methane issues than we've ever had before. It does tell us where the highest rate of emissions is coming from. Tom Williams says the same approach, thermal imaging combined with computer mapping, can help us better understand the challenges at any place around the country from old oil fields to fracking sites where methane may surface to threaten us. We're the first to use it in the Los Angeles area and it is something that the bureaucracy that's out there should be looking at. To be on the safe side, the City Council has called for a study of longer term solutions. And they conducted the study or are we still waiting? Well, we're still waiting. Some agencies are starting to use the FLIR camera to track LA methane. And the city's methane code has been updated in recent years. And with it, the safeguards required to keep the gas in check. They include vent pipes and underground methane barriers, like the one mentioned in the sign here. Does that reassure you? No. They'll say that it's, it's mitigated, it's, it's, um, it's fine now, but people forget. This massive development in West LA has long been a testing ground for the safety devices required by the city's methane code. But as we can see from these graphs, gases are still coming to the surface, as they are at the corner of Wilshire and Curson. Tom says no one wants to tackle real fixes, like installing enough vent pipes to match the threat. You would want to have maybe one every 50 feet in order to vent the gas. If they build the subway, even more of a problem. How will the subway affect the movement of oil and gas? As the city tried to go and pull all the parties together to focus on a solution? No, they haven't nor do they want to because Why? it is a very complex, expensive process. Are these methane emissions a Frankenstein that never goes away? Is there no uh, saving gospel you can give to them and say, look, this is what we need to do and this is how we do it? Keep your windows open. Until politicians and regulators get serious, Tom Williams sees these images as premonitions of badly managed oil fields all over the country, evidence that Band-Aid solutions won't work. Band-Aids don't heal the wound. The wound is still there.